Danielle, welcome. Um, I'm going to just start off quickly by um, uh, give a bit of background how I'm involved in, and how I, I guess, fit into the, the, the picture. Um, we met uh, in 2013. Um, I believe you guys um, set out the post that you are looking for someone to represent Toledo Baron in, in South Africa. Uh, at that stage, I was in the beginning phases of my own business in the wine industry here in South Africa. Um, and uh, I was lucky enough to, to be appointed by you guys. Um, it was very new to me at that stage because I was always on the, on the finished product side of wine, uh, selling and marketing uh, South African wine. And then I, I started working with you on, on the production side, which, um, which definitely was a big eye opener for me. Um, being in the, in the cellar with winemakers, you know, trying to figure out stylistically what they wanted to achieve. But I think a lot of the consumers that I deal with, even on, on the wine side, doesn't always understand the intricacies of barrel making, the effect of oak on, on, the, on wine itself. But before we get to that, um, maybe give us a bit of background on yourself. Uh, you're a qualified winemaker. Um, you're involved in, in, uh, in Toledo Baron now for a number of years. Where did you start? Where did your love for wine start? And how did you end up um, where you are today? Okay, thank you, Corinne. Um, so, in fact, uh, on my side, uh, initially, uh, I did a school uh, to be engineer in agriculture. And uh, at this school, um, I specialized in viticulture. And so, um, I decided to learn viticulture and enology uh, when I was uh, 19. And uh, my first contact uh, with the, the wine industry really was uh, when I was 20. It was in 1997. I was doing an internship in, uh, in California, in Sonoma Valley. And uh, while uh, working there in this winery, uh, we were receiving some uh, French oak barn from, uh, from France. And uh, I was in charge of uh, um, preparing the barns for, to, to, get the, to get the wines. And so that was my first contact uh, with, with the barracks. And then uh, I continued to, uh, I continue my study after, three years after this, I became uh, graduated and I started to work for a Bordeaux negotiation as a winemaker. And after this, so for one year and a half, I was working uh, as a winemaker and um, I was, I always had some interest in, uh, in the barns and uh, when I was a student also I met with my actual partner and uh, we started to work together in 2002 and uh, end of 2001, sorry, and then we became partner in 2002. Would you say that um, your winemaking background um, knowing what winemakers want, uh, the need for, um, for barrels in the cellar helps you in uh, preparing um, and, and evolving Toledo Baron's products and the work you've done in the last 18 years. Do you think your winemaking background definitely assisted you uh, with that process? Uh, yes, I think yes, because uh, initially when uh, we so my partner took back the cooperage uh, 20 years ago and when uh, we met and started to work together we didn't really have uh, experience in the uh, cooperage industry and uh, there is you don't have books to explain what is a good barrel or what is a bad barrel yeah. and so we had to make our own um, exper experiments uh, we had to um, to study uh, ourselves with our customer what is a good barrel to try to understand how to to do the toasting how to to select the um, to select the um, the oak uh, etc etc so because we have the knowledge uh, in the wine industry because we know how to taste the wine because we we know how to make a wine um, it has been very helpful for us to um, to select and find a good technique um, to to match the the barrel with wine. So for sure, it has been very helpful 
to set up the actual range of barrel we have, the range of barrel we have. and the style of uh, tonnerie baron also. also. Yeah. Now, tonnerie baron dates back to 1875. Um, use you were involved in the early 2000s um, with so much history and tradition of uh, being a coupage. Uh, what do you think were the major focus point for the coupage to grow until we, we are today? What was the initial stages of 18 years ago uh, that you addressed to become a better coupage um, in the future? Yeah, so it's very interesting to, to, go, to go back at the beginning of the coupage also. So initially, the coupage has been founded in 1875 by Henri Baron. Henri Baron uh, um, was, was living in, uh, in Charente, Charente, near Cognac, and he, and he was a cooper at, at Martel uh, Cooperage. So uh, uh, all the big uh, Cognac houses uh, in the 19th century owned their um, own uh, cooperage. So Henri Baron was working for Martel, Cognac Martel, uh, at uh, the cooperage uh, owned by Martel. And in 1875, he decided to start his own cooperage. So he came back to his village and um, start uh, the Baron cooperage. So initially, the Tonnerre Baron was providing barrel only for the cognac industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, up to 1996, uh, the cooperage was working exclusively for spirits. Mm -hmm. So we were exporting uh, in the 50s also, we were exporting some uh, barrel to uh, South Africa for brandies. And so the main market were cognac and South Africa. And uh, in the 1996, uh, the cooperage was going to close. And this is when my partner, Xavier Baron, who is the grand grandson of Henri Baron and Nicolas Tombu, decided to, to take back the cooperage, which was going to, to stop. So at this stage, the cooperage in 1996 was not producing any new oak because the, the cognac industry was very bad. So the cognac industry in, in the 90s was, uh, was, was not doing uh, very well. And so they were not buying too much new oak. And uh, so in 1996, the idea uh, of Nicolas and Xavier was to start to produce barrel for, uh, for wine industry. So in fact, the history of Tonnerre Baron in the wine industry is pretty new. It's only since 1996. And I met with them in 98 and we started to work together in the late 2000, 2001. Uh, at this stage, we, are, we were living from a white sheet. So we were starting from a white sheet. So we have absolutely no background in, the, in barrel for, for wine. And so we had to, to reinvent Tonnerre Baron for wine and so uh, we were um, um, trying to find a style find a style and so we were and meeting so with we were winemakers, meeting with winemakers and, and we decided to, we decided to go at this stage on a barrel, barrel with, with um, 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 allow to preserve the fruit uh, which will allow to enhance the wine, wine. Uh, to emancipate the wine, wine without, without covering, covering it. it. So at this stage, the idea was really to make a barrel which was very delicate, which will give more complexity. And uh, we wanted to uh, avoid any kind of flavor of toast, coffee, caramel, vanilla, etc., etc. So that was in uh, early 2000. And as you know, early 2000, uh, the, style the style in general, in general People were looking for were looking was, for, was vanilla, toast, vanilla, and oak. Toast and oak. <laughs> so we were not <laughs> really in the um, in the fashion, but I think that uh, that was a good uh, a good move because right now uh, since six seven years, six, what, seven years what we see is that people, is that people are, are looking for, are looking for uh, uh, preservation, preservation, complexity, complexity fitness, fitness, density, density volume, volume, plant. And but they, 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 they want to be able to this, uh, this uh, flavor. So uh, we, we're going to get to the, um, I guess, the attributes that I've experienced and obviously you know so well from Baron as, as, a, as a barrel supplier. Um, but as I said earlier, my background is always <laughs> as a brand. Um, 
and, and the passion that I have for site-specific terroir-driven wines, wines that come from a specific area and, and really enhances and shows the true characteristics um, of, of that region um, is really great. And, and I remember in our initial discussions back in 20, 2013, before I joined, um, what I really loved about the process that, uh, that our groupings are doing is, as the winemaker works from vineyard to bottle, uh, you work from forest to barrel. You own the whole process, which I don't think consumers and people in even uh, wine connoisseurs will always understand that. But your process is very much the same as what a winemaker from an estate or a, a specific appellation will work, which is really, uh, I think for me, was the big uh, ticking point that I found. It really has a, a passionate story. There's traceability, there's responsibility, but also there's consistency um, in the quality of all right, so uh, yes it's very important so um uh at baron cooperage uh we decided to 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 be able to 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 do every step uh, ourselves so um it's not easy because you have to have uh, knowledge in uh, many different fields and so uh something which is very important for us was to be able to to source our own state mm -hmm. So um, the first step is to be able to buy the good trees. So Xavier Baron is, uh, we have our so, own stave mill and Xavier Baron is the buyer for the stave mill. So he is uh, purchasing the trees in the forest in France. Uh, and then we, we have those trees at the, at the stave mill. We split it, we dry it. So all the process, we manage all the process from the forest to the finished product. So this is the first point, very, very important. So we have the, the same, um, the two companies, the Stave Mill and uh, the Cooperage are on the same place also. So we have a very good traceability. Once the logs arrive at the Cooperage, uh, it never uh, moves from this place before it becomes a barrel. So yeah. for us, it's very important. So Xavier Baron has the knowledge to, to select the best trees first. Then uh, we have um, the drying yard uh, next to the cooperage. So we, we dry the stave on a concrete uh, floor uh, for, um, to have a very clean and uh, to avoid any um, fungus, etc. development during the, the drying. We also collect all the water from the dryer, uh, which is uh, very, very important to, to save uh, water. After, so we, after a 24 months minimum of drying time, we will, uh, we will start to make the barrel. Uh, a very important point also is the oak origin. So we are working with uh, for every type of barrel we always work with specific uh, oak origin and uh, we also do a selection depending on the grain so we have uh, uh, the oak origin which is important we have the grain also so we have some barrel which are extra tight grain others tight grain um, then after this we will toast the barrel it's a very important point also the toasting Mm -hmm. And we have developed a, a very specific system uh, to measure uh, the toasting temperature and to be able to reproduce it.
So during toasting, we have a laser which is measuring uh, the temperature of the wood during all the toasting process. And we have a curve, we have a model, so we have a color screen next to the brasero. And the cooper watch the color screen and the cooper has to follow the curve. So he will do his best to follow the curve, to follow the model. And at the end of the toasting, the computer will calculate the percentage of conformity of the toast compared to the model. And so since we have this system since six years now, we are able to uh, certify that um, the curve is 90%. Um, we have a minimum of 90% conformity on each barrel. So if you take 20 barrel medium plus, the 20 barrel uh, medium plus will have 90% minimum the same curve of temperature. So it's very important to have um, consistency. And today the winemaker is looking for consistency. I mean, uh, when you order 20 barrels, for example, he has to be sure that uh, every toast will be the same. So now the barrel is... Finished. Yes, it's okay now. The, the barrel is finished, it's made, uh, it's ready at the cooperage to go to the, to the winery, whether it's in France, in Europe, in America, South Africa, Australia, wherever. Um, one thing that I've learned in a very short space of time, uh, and, and I don't think it's necessarily just a, a South African challenge, it's... Um, it's really understanding what oak to use on your specific and, and different wines and varieties that you work with. And, and I've, I've seen so many times that uh, winemakers, if they think they need 100 barrels, they would buy 100 barrels according to their budget, rather than um, buying better oak and maybe the right oak for specific wines, uh, but buy less barrels. Um, so I've got a statement which I, I would like to share with you and, and hear your thoughts. When, when meeting with winemakers, it's almost a question of let's buy less oak, but buy better oak so that the wine comes out better at the end of the maturation time. So yes, so, yes uh, uh, for sure oak is expensive. It, uh, it's expensive because, um, as you know, the, the price of the wood is, uh, is increasing every year and uh, it's a lot of work to make a barrel also. And so I understand that uh, budget is uh, something uh, winemakers has to take care of. And um, I totally agree with your idea of buying less oak, but better oak. Because to me, uh, what is very important is first uh, for the winemaker, I think, to be able to, um, to select the style he's looking for. To see, to see uh, uh, for him, what is important is to be able to, to describe, describe to the cooper uh, what he's looking for, what, which result he wants to achieve, for what price, and um, um, what price, and uh, in how many times, because you can age one in bar for six months, you can do it for 12 months, 18 months, etc. So first, select the style. What is looking for? Is he is looking for uh, uh, flavor. Is he looking for structure, for more density, for more length, etc., etc. And depending on that, uh, the budget he has for to, to achieve this uh, this goal. And uh, to me, um, it is better to um, because a bad barrel is always too expensive. I think. And uh, to me, uh, it's better to have a 30 percent New York top quality than uh, having 80 uh, percent New York uh, with uh, um, low price barrel to be able to uh, to fit in the in the, in the budget. And once you start to 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 get. Um, um, low no, price, you can get uh, green, uh, green oak, uh, um, green tannins, bitterness, etc., etc. So finally, it does not help the, the fruit. Uh, it does not help the wine, and uh, you will not achieve a better result. So to me, um, you're absolutely right when you say to it's better to buy less oak uh, to be in your budget than trying to to get. Uh, 
lower yeah. price and uh, yeah. more quantity. Yeah, for sure. A big argument for me, or discussion for me with winemakers is always what, what our barrels have to do with your wine is make the wine better after 20 months or 10 months in oak. It, it shouldn't be something that when you take it out, you have to start blending different components from other barrels or food, you know, to, to kind of create a style. The barrel needs to enhance the wine and, and nurture the wine and not overpower the, the wine that you made and worked so hard on from, from vineyard to bottle. 